Thank you. Thank you. I'll have to figure, I'll have to figure that out later. All right, so we're going to start off with the regular microphone then, guys. I'll figure out that problem later. It's uh, to be done. We won't have that happen again. I apologize. It does look like we have uh, everybody here uh, from YouTube and from Facebook. We'll continue that, and uh, I, think, uh, I think we're going to be better now because I've got it on the built-in microphone. So it can't still be doing it now if it's on the built-in microphone. Uh, so, all right. Uh, as somebody mentioned, because I can't take their joke, maybe we got a little bit of CV-19 here in our audio gear. I don't know. Uh, but uh, we usually have such a great stream, and we'll have to go off of the computer mic for now uh, and live with that from both of us. So it might get a little echoey or something from Paul when he's over here on the side of me. But, hey, that's the way it goes. Uh, we'll just fly with it. Don't exactly have an audio engineer waiting on, on standby. Good. You are all are here. Jeff's here. We'll start bringing lots of people into the stream. We've got, uh, thank you, Jeff, for helping out. We've got Jeff. We've got David L. We've got uh, Jorge Meneses. Thank you for joining us. And, uh, yeah, so we'll get started. So, yes, shows. This is uh, why I might have been stuttering, because I've been going all weekend at these events. We had a, a great time out there. And uh, Reef, Reef Stock was a, a really, really good, good show this year. There's a lot of people attending, um, a lot of uh, exhibitors there, a lot of new products that are coming out uh, that we saw. Uh, one of the cool things that we did at the show um, was something new that we're that we've started to try, and it is we, you know, for years I've I've been going to these shows. Well, first of all, for years the Apex has been around, right? Uh, it is 2009, and we go to these shows, and coral sellers come with ten, twenty thousand dollars worth of corals in their tanks, and there's many of those. So there's, I don't know, maybe there's a quarter million dollars of corals out there on the on the show floor, and then they, at the end of the day, they go up to the hotel or over the bar and have some beers, and then they go to sleep at night, and they have all of their investment, all of their potential sales for the next day. Okay all of it at risk of what can ever happen in that environment in those little tanks overnight with a, a strange uh, facility that could shut off power that could do all these different things and yet still not many of these guys were doing monitoring uh, on their tanks and I just I, I guess they found a way to put it out of their mind I could never be able to do it uh, I kept asking them why don't you monitor why don't you monitor? yeah I'm gonna get around to that yeah I'm gonna get around to that so it just occurred to me earlier this year, why don't we just do it for them? You know, we have a lot of livestock available, uh, I mean, that can that can just die off. That would be horrible, right? And many of these guys have had that happen. I mean, it literally happens two or three times a year that somebody loses an entire frag tank's worth of stuff. And, uh, the you know, what could we do? So we created a little device, a monitoring device, which is an Apex, with the four probes, temperature, pH, ORP, and salinity all connected to it, monitoring only, that could just plug right into an outlet and drop right on the edge of their tank. And you can see zoanthids.com was one of them that we did uh, you know, for, um, uh, for them. We also did Top Shelf Aquatics, and we did Dynasty Corals. So all three of those at Reefstock had this brand new thing that we're, that we're trying. And I think we're going to go with it even bigger at the next events. You'll see it around. But you walk up, you could actually see the parameters for that tank. So if you're a buyer, you could know that those corals are being kept well. And during the show, too, they could see what was happening with salinity. And a lot of them were really surprised at what was, oh, yeah, that's right. Salinity actually worked. Yeah, there were no micro bubbles in the tank. There were no power things that could interfere with it. And the entire weekend, salinity worked in the tanks. So, it, and yeah, it was pretty amazing, right? Uh, and they could see the salinity changes that happen in their tank as they're bagging water, right? And they often would top off with new seawater and not have a freshwater top off, so their salinity would really rise. Uh, definitely interesting things. Overnight, some of these guys had pH down to 7.55. Yeah, I know. Basically, I mean, not overnight, maybe about 8 or 9 o'clock at night after everybody was in all day and it just kept driving it down, driving it down. Um, but I think they learned something from the data that they got, and they also just had so much less anxiety overnight by having this on their tanks. And we're happy to do it, and I think we're going to do it in a much bigger way in future shows. Um, yeah, all the salinity, look at this. Wow, salinity probe that works. 
Yes, salinity probe that works. The salinity probe works just fine. It's getting it to work well in your environment is a little tricky because you have bubbles and wires and everything else going all around. Um, somebody said ditch the probe holders. I don't know why I'd want to ditch the probe holders. The probe holders actually uh, sit right there in the tank. Uh, thank you. I can't pronounce your name from, uh, oh, it's going by. Somebody from Taiwan. Sorry, can't pronounce that name. <laughs> Somebody will tell me what it is. Amanda, thank you. Amanda, thank you for joining us. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hook you guys up with ACI, too, at uh, the show with a monitor as well. Okay, let's, uh, let's, look at the, let's look at the tour dates. So this is an interesting thing. Here's our, our Neptune Systems tour dates for this year. And interesting things are happening already. Unfortunately, this whole coronavirus thing has a lot of impact. Uh, that is out of our control, and it's kind of making me a little bit sad right now because I really do enjoy getting out there and meeting all of you, and much of this is beyond our control. We don't know what shows are going to happen or not happen this year. Everything is full steam ahead still, including Interzoo. My intuition is, is that Interzoo, it's uh, you know, pretty likely it's not going to happen this year. Uh, Reef of Palooza Orlando, I talked to the event or organizers at Reefstock. It's still full steam ahead, so if you're in the Florida area, please, please show up, support the hobby. Don't be scared off by the coronavirus. Take whatever precautions you need for yourself, uh, but come on down and uh, join us for the event. Uh, obviously, it's about a month out. Maybe things will change for the better. Maybe things will change for the worse, but we can't know that now. Uh, let's see, we have any questions? I love all this conversation right now that's happening about the salinity probe. That's great. Uh, okay. Oh, another thing cool that happened at Reefstock, uh, the winner of the Reef to Reef raffle was, I don't know, he's a 10-year-old, 12-year-old boy who won the Apex EL. So that was really cool to give it to somebody that is the next generation. Now, I've got a couple of pieces of content here. Oh, let's talk about a couple more things, too, at Reefstock. I saw the new Kessel light at Reefstock. It uh, looked nice, very svelte, uh, but one of the coolest features I did see on it is in addition to the fact that we are talking to them about using the, uh, the API that we have, the IOTA Internet of Things Aquarium API that we have so you can interface lights and pumps with the Apex, in addition to them already looking to do that, it has 0 to 10 control. So unlike the 360X, they decided that with this new AP9, and unlike the AP700 too, with the AP9, it will have 0 to 10 control, which means you will be able to control it with your Apex. To what extent, I don't know yet, uh, but definitely, definitely uh, a good progress forward for all you control freaks out there who also want to do the Kessel thing. I, I saw a Facebook post earlier today or yesterday where somebody was asking if we were just going to basically shut off everybody if we ever had a product uh, that competed in the lighting de department. And that is not our goal. We're definitely not going to stop integrating with other products. That is part of our DNA. We're going to continue it. We're going to continue to give other companies a way to do that. Uh, but we will continue to develop products as well where there might be crossover with other industries. Uh, it, it, we are not going to build an entirely closed in, uh, environment or ecosystem for our products. That we're committed not to do. Okay, let's see here. Let's see. I'm new to Apex. I'm going to answer a couple questions here. Is there a recommended time frame before you recalibrate the probe? Speaking of salinity, my salinity test perfect, but it seems to run high with the Apex. Well, I mean, we're going to answer these questions over and over again. Uh, as far as doing your probes, there's a lot of there's a lot of answers to that question. I'm going to save that one for Paul. He's got some really good answers to that. As far as the salinity, it's likely that even where you're testing with the Apex and where you're testing with something else are probably the same. It's just the precision differences between the two devices that you're doing. So that's definitely uh, probably not as big of a deal as you think it is. Let's see here. Costa Rica. Thank you for joining us, Juan, from Costa Rica. Uh, they're having a show down there called Camco. I don't know that I'll make it down to Costa Rica this year, Juan, but uh, thank you for the invite. Thank you for showing up, Drama D. Uh, let's see, somebody said, Jason Garcia said, tape your probes to your piping, always stable, don't use probe holders. I don't know what he means by don't use probe holders, but I, you know, 
I could support saying don't use a wire holder that's going to wrap all of those wires all together with your salinity wire. That maybe might not be a good idea. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I'm just reading all of these comments. Uh, need to have you guys in St. Louis. I don't know about that. Ty, thanks for joining us, man. Ty had an interesting question here. Are there any plans on doing the, the BRS Apex again? Uh, I don't know if it'll if we will ever have a BRS version of the Apex, but there might be a lower end Apex at some point way out in the future. Uh, as I've said many times, the reason for us doing this was to address a group of customers, have them give us feedback after they purchased it, and have us understand how they're using it. So if we do decide to come out with a product, we can better steer it for what all the customers want. And we could get that out very quickly. Okay, I got a little something here for you guys. It's not Apex related. I just had a couple of things that, that have happened a lot in my tank recently, and I wanted to share. I don't want this uh, stream to always be all Apex all the time. I'd love to share some things with you, uh, insights that, that I have. And uh, the first one is Coral War. So there's a lot of people who deal with corals coming in contact with each other or fighting with each other inside their tanks. Uh, the ways that they deal with some people are, I think, overreact a lot. So I wanted to take you through a few pictures in my tank because I have a different approach to it. And it doesn't mean it's right. But I wanted to at least share with you and show you that sometimes coral war isn't all bad. I want to also show with you some of the effects when coral war you know, create certain things to happen in your tank. And, uh, you know, maybe you can take that back and think as your tank grows out whether or not you want to have your t hands in the tank and monkey around with things as much or where it makes sense. So let me take you through uh, some pictures here and we'll see, uh, we'll see where it leads. So first, first of all, this is a, an image in my tank. I shot all these today, by the way. Uh, and this has been this particular situation has been like this for probably about six to eight months. Uh, it is uh, most of my tank is SPS, and most of what I'm going to be talking about is SPS here. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my Heniocus again a little later on another topic that I'm going to touch on. But most of what I'm talking about is SPS coral war. Uh, SPS and LPS don't generally uh, live nicely near each other. Uh, when they do fight, uh, usually the LPS wins, um, almost always. So I'm not really addressing the LPS versus or chalices and things like this, fighting with your, your SPS or even fighting with each other. I'm talking mostly about SPS here because that's what I have most of. Uh, so this is a, you can see here there's a tort. I think it's, uh, help me out, Paul, which tort is this? It's a, I can't remember which one it is. The green one. Yeah, it's a green and purple tort, and it grows like a weed. If you want a, a, a tort coral, that a tortuosa, right, coral that grows like a weed, this is the one. Uh, I have it all throughout my tank, and this piece actually broke and then grew down and started to try to grow back out, and as it did, it hit this other stag. And this is a perfect example of what can happen when two corals come together and then find a way to just, you know, work it out. It isn't always bad. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the next one. This is using PDFs now. I'm doing this. It's a new way. This is an example when Coral War goes right, in my opinion, right? I've got uh, a whole bunch of corals here that have just found a way to exist. They've come through the green slimer that I have there. You can see there's a pink Seriotopora and there's a purple, I guess, Melka, I think it's called, um, uh, Stylophora that is finding a way up through this coral, it's finding a way to survive. And for me, it creates just a really, uh, a really cool natural environment in the tank. Now, in some of the corals I'm going to talk about in a minute, I'm really welcome this with these corals because they're kind of like everyday inexpensive corals, right? It's, it's not going to be a big deal if I lose my Seriotopora coral or if I lose my Pocillopora to the green slimer. But if they, they are able to make it, it makes just a really cool bouquet in the tank. Let's see here. Next one. Here's another example of a kind of deep water coral. I think this might be the little red Ferraris, like the common name. And it is, uh, it's coming up and around. It actually went away for probably almost a year underneath that blue tip green slimer there. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, it was like Phoenix rising from the ashes and finding a way out 
and around that blue tip green slimer. Definitely a really cool effect when you see this happening. It's almost like fireworks happening in your tank. You just stuff starts exploding from different places that you didn't expect it. And one of the key things is this is leaving things alone. Keeping your hands out of the tank, not worrying about uh, what might happen, just kind of let it go. Now here's an example of what happens sometimes when things don't get along. Uh, this is a combination of an unhealthy spot for the coral, which means it's not getting a whole lot of light. It's far off in the left of my tank. It's, it's, a, it, it's a red planet coral that's interacting with this other, uh, I don't know, robins, pink robins, something or other, acro. And uh, the, you know, the two of them are interacting. One of them, I think uh, the other acro has more juice than the red planet right there. It's kind of darkened out. And it's winning. It's actually taking over and winning against that coral. Now, you can look at that and go, wow, that's horrible. What, what can you do? This is just the natural thing that happens in nature. Maybe at some point, I don't know, maybe I'll break it out of there. Maybe I'll leave it. Maybe it'll naturally come off. Maybe I'll let it die, get algae on it, and then plant some other thing on top of it, which I have an example here in a minute. Now, here's an example of a coral that I don't want, and, I, and I'm kind of doing bonsai around. I don't want it to, uh, to take over. I've got this really nice kind of gold-orange millipora, that is a little bit faster growing and more aggressive than that Oregon tort there. I think it's an Oregon tort. It's really slow, really slow to base out, and it, uh, it, it's one of my favorites. It's got this great color, and I wouldn't want that other coral to overtake it. So as it gets closer over and over, I do snip that one back. That is one that I don't let just go crazy because they, you know, they basically, uh, you know, it will take over, and that other coral will lose. So there's a time for it, and there's a time not for it, at least in my tank. Here's an interesting one that happened. Uh, this particular uh, coral is one of those uh, hi, uh, effluenza coral, effluensis coral. Uh, it's basically a tabling acropora, and it was given to me from, uh, from Richard Ross. He said, here, take this. He carved it out of his tank, and I brought it home, and it was pretty big. I don't know, probably about I don't know, two and a half, three inches around. I stuck it on the frag tank, which was on that side. Glass is not far from there, you can see. And I moved the, the frag, no, it's not the frag tank, the frag rack. I moved the frag rack up one day, and it fell off, and it landed right there on that green acropora uh, that I got from, uh, I think, Brad Cyphus at one time. And it just landed there. And I'm like, hmm, let's see what happens. I mean, sometimes it's just fun to see what happens in your tank. And so it's been sitting there now for probably six months at least, Growing, it started to, you can, you can probably see it started to encrust over part of that coral. The rest of that green coral is doing just fine. There's new growth all the way around that coral, and it's going to take off and do its own thing. And this really gives you some fun in the hobby to see what is going to happen with your corals. Okay, I hope you guys are enjoying this little offshoot segment. You know, I'll, if you do, great, let us know. If you don't, let me know, and we'll just make geek out, you know, Apex stuff. I, 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 oh, what happened here? Stupid fish. Has that ever happened to you with your camera? <laughs> Just when I'm trying to get the picture. Uh, I think that's a Solarensis, Paul, I think, right? The, the ras with the, looks like clown face. He just kind of came right in front of the camera. So that's fun. Yeah. And here's another example of one that I won't let get overrun. I don't know if you guys know what coral that is, but it's not probably getting enough light to show off its best beauty. Uh, but that is a Walt Disney coral, and next to it, it has some of uh, those torts that grow really fast. So this is one that I definitely trim back around. Um, so, you you know, find places in your tank where you can let things go wild, and find things places in your tank where you can just, you know, you know care for those special frags that cost you a lot of money. Here's an example of a Seriatopora, the Ponape bird's nest Seriatopora. I got a frag from... Uh, Neptune Aquatics a couple of months ago, a tiny frag, and there was an old dead piece of the that tort that had died when it got in, in contact with something else. Some algae had grown over it. I just kind of left it in place, and now it became a stump for me to plant a new coral on and start a new generation of corals in that spot, which I think is also very fun. Here's a, another example, too. I just wanted to show it. Of th this is Future War. So this is a fox flame in the back that is a really cool coral. Uh, I think it's Jason Fox Fox Flame. The one in the front is a Jason Fox Carolinia something or other. I don't know exactly. I've had it for some time. It's beautiful coral. And the one in between them in the back is some coral I just happened to get from Robert down at Neptune. And it's really not growing into anything great. 
And so that particular coral is probably going to get just hacked back to nothing because otherwise it's going to overgrow these two really cool corals. So again, another place where I'm not going to let everything go wild because I know it'll grow faster. Uh, that's a good question. Stay to the end. Free frags for all on Terrence. I tell you what, um, maybe I will have something someday around here that when stuff grows out, if you happen to be a local or if you happen to be in town, maybe I'll open up a day you can come over and pick up a bunch of frags out of my tank. Yeah, oh, that's right. Paul's telling me off screen here. Yeah, Robert uh, from Neptune Aquatics uh, has come over and taken home buckets of boatloads of stuff. I the, the last time I brought them to him, I had three uh, buckets full after he took them out of my ice chest. I had to layer it in my ice chest. I had so many of them. And when he was done, he had whole sections of his, uh, his frag tanks from all the stuff that I had brought him. So maybe we'll do that. If you guys are interested, you let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll open it up. Okay. Let's see. What's the next one? Here's a really important one. Above, you'll see um, one of my favorite corals in the tank, which is the pearlberry. I call it Brad's pearlberry because I think it's different than the ORA pearlberry. I'm going I'm to go with that. Brad Seifus has had it forever. It's not in his tank right now. I owe him a piece back, uh, but he gave me a piece of it. And it's a prized coral by many of us here at Neptune, myself, and people in Utah as well. And, uh, but right below it, you see there's a hydnophora. And those things are <laughs> evil. Paul is shaking his head off camera because he has one in his tank that he, you know, he loves to hate. Uh, so it, it, this is a coral that is super aggressive, the Hydnophora. And will when it goes near something else, just completely sting the heck out of it. So this is really, I'm tempting with danger here by having this nearby. But I do keep it cut back so it can't hit it. And so for me, it, it creates a really dynamic and, and uh, interesting display when people say, come over and go, oh my gosh, that beautiful coral. And why do you have it near that evil thing below it? So if you want to come over and you want to get some hydnophora flag, uh, hydno, hyd, hydnophrags, okay, then you can come over and have some of those. Here's just another example of when stuff does grow great and it starts to grow together. You just get these beautiful bouquets. There's a purple stag that's reached the surface right in between uh, the blue tip green stag. Definitely really cool stuff. Um, that's pretty much it that I have for you guys on, you know, on, on that. And I hope you know, maybe you got something out of it. What I, what I want you to get out of it is hopefully enjoy your tanks more by letting them be a little bit. People ask me, you know, what is the secret to your success, Terrence? A lot of the secret to my success is keeping my hands out of the tank so I'm not breaking things off, so I'm not ruining things, so I'm not kind of infecting my tank. All of these reasons. And a, the, one of the biggest reasons people put their hands in their tank is because some piece of coral might have been fallen off or broken off or another coral looks like it's going to maybe in a month come in contact with another coral. So that's what I wanted to kind of get across there. I hope you guys enjoyed that part. Next up, a little short, uh, a very short segment called Fish Pigs. Uh, I have two Heniocus in my tank. Paul hates the Heniocus. Uh, I love them. I love them especially when they're about that big and that they don't eat LPS. But I found in retrospect that no matter what Matt Wandell says in his article that he wrote, uh, all Heniocus have a tendency to eat LPS or some LPS. Uh, but I've stuck with it with mine. Mine are now about, I don't know, saucer, like teacup saucer size uh, fish. But the biggest problem with them in my tank is they are pigs. They will eat you out of house and home. Uh, I, I, I don't even want to know how much they poop. But LRS food ain't cheap. And I don't like the fact that I have to throw in a lot of LRS food to keep those guys fed. So I'm going to show you guys a little video that I did just today when I was feeding the fish in kind of a way that, that I do it, and I, I'll just kind of narrate it for you. It's only a couple minutes. Uh, let's see here. Get rid of that. And... Oh, it's right up here. Okay. So here it is today in my tank. The fish see me coming up. They are all... I mean, I don't even have to get within three feet of the tank, and they think it's feeding time every time. Sorry for the reflections on there. It was daytime. Uh, you can see the Heniocus are absolutely losing their mind. These Formula 2 pellets I get from Ocean Nutrition, they're, they're really, really um, big. They're, I don't know, three and a half, four millimeters each. And the Heniocus just, just suck them up. Now, they're a sinking pellet, 
which is really great because now I'm able to stick these pellets in first. They'll sink down right in the front of the tank, and the heniocus and the other big tangs as well will attack those first and start to fill themselves up on those big pellets before I throw in the good stuff for all the other fish. So you can see some of the small fish even trying to go after them. Some of them are successful, um, but most of them aren't. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, Drama D says, man, those hennies are huge. So you can see they're just sucking it up. One of the cool things, too, is they go down into the sand, and they'll you know, kind of flip their, their pectorals and move the sand, find where there's a piece, and get it right out of the corner down there in the rocks. And after they all, you know, pretty much I just keep throwing food in, keep throwing food in, and get them nice and full on that uh, inexpensive ocean nutrition. And because it, it really is, compared to the LRS, it's super cheap. Because uh, LRS is way better food, in my opinion, for overall, because there's so much mix of stuff in it. Uh, but then once they all get all, all, all fat, I, this time I actually de uh, defrosted the LRS. Uh, to show you guys, but usually I just throw it in frozen and everybody attacks it. Oh, there's some more pellets. Look at that. They're still eating the pellets. Uh, even the, even that marginalis butterfly thinks he's going to get one of those pellets into his, into his gullet. It's not going to happen. Let's see if I can, maybe I can fast forward this a little bit to where we get to the, the real food. So the pellets are still going in. Now we're going to go with some LRS. They all know it's coming. And now all the small fish can get it, but the, the key thing is, is that now the heniocus and those other tangs, they're not as aggressive. They're not so starving that they're like, you know, just <laughs> like running into all the other fish and corals and everything. And most of all, I get to feed all the rest of my tank without losing my wallet. Uh, so this is just one little tip I wanted to give you guys. Uh, if, you, if you do have a lot of big fish, use some big pellets first before you throw the good stuff in. Uh... Question from Drama D says, I'd be worried a fish that big in my reef getting injured from corals. Ever experienced this? Um, I, what I've seen mostly from people is not that the fish uh, get injured by the corals, but the corals get injured by the fish. Um, big clumsy fish tend to knock over acros like crazy. Uh, let's see. I don't see any other questions. Anyway, guys, that's, that's it for some of this content. I'm going to bring Paul on. He's got some good stuff for you. Uh, we got about uh, 20 minutes to hit on, maybe a little bit more because we came on late. Paul's got some good content. We're going to kick it over to the tech corner. Demo. All right, there's. Going right into the... I didn't want to go right into that, but I don't know which other one there is. Is there another one? Uh, that one. Yeah, there we, there go. we go. Well, Paul, welcome to hey, another what's up, show. Parents? Well, it's going great. It's yeah. going great, except for the microphone. Delivery. Yeah, you know, sometimes these technical matters. You know, you just. You yeah. Know, so Vincent's not here. It's true, right? You know, our normal guy who takes care of getting behind the camera. Out. Vincent usually makes sure that his uh, iPad is on and playing sounds. <laughs> no, just kidding. just gotta give it to Vincent. Yeah, but he does. He takes care of taking care of the camera and the audio. Mm -hmm. and, and while we're trying to be on camera, make sure everything works for us. Yeah, I don't know what the the issue is, but we're going to figure it out before the next. I'm show. sure we will get down to the bottom of it. Uh, let us know in the comments if you can hear both of us and make sure everything's sounding okay. Looks like we still have all the YouTubers out there. Good. good. I don't. Yeah, we still have Facebookers. Facebookers out there too. got a little quiet. Um, anyhow, uh, love always seeing things in your tank, man. Thank you. you. Know, it was it's it's a uh, it's a tank that uh, the pictures um, uh, do not do it justice. You know, well, but I appreciate it, that. You know, it's uh, it's definitely always fun to look at. I uh, I I, I want to do stuff in this show uh, that is not just Apex stuff. Oh, yeah. If that's what people want, if they just say, "Look, stop," you know, showing us other stuff about reef mm -hmm. keeping, then that'll be fine too. That's really your show mm -hmm. uh, to what we have. But I, it just occurred to me today that both of those things, because they both kind of kind of happen. I walked by my my tank this morning, and I'm like, "Gosh, man, all these corals intertwining are yeah. so cool." Mm -hmm. You know that does everybody allow this to happen, or are they missing out? Yeah, I basically have a very similar, you know, kind of motto to you, right, in terms of the way I let things grow together. Now, sometimes, one thing that I often do, um, especially with my my, my Hanafra, 
Um, Anaphora? What is that? <laughs> my, you know, when it's getting into my acropora and stuff. Oh, acropora. Like that, you know, and your uh, montipora? And my non montiporas, yes. yes. It, it, uh, what I do is I actually just put, because <laughs> I can't get rid of it at this point. It's uh -huh. on the rock, it's everywhere. So I actually get a big tube of super glue, right? And I put it, you know, or I use that max spec glue gun. It actually is a good purpose for it. And I just lay super glue. So you, you create the, coral death. Yes, yes. I, I will. I'll be like, oh, you stung my uh, Ceratopora last night. Let me show you what will happen as a result of that. Uh, so that's one part, that's one thing that I do. I sometimes kind of intervene. Corporal right? coral punishment. Yes, yes, I punish the coral. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect it for this to go that, that direction, but that's okay. Uh, but um, Do yeah. you let any of them ever interact? Yeah, I do. Um, so right now, my Ven, one of my favorite corals in my tank, it's uh, beating the uh, Spongiotis that's in mm -hmm. there, right? And it, it, the Spongiotis has just left this beautiful plate, right, where the Ven is just starting to grow Come onto. Right into it? And, well, no. Just growing onto oh, it yeah. like it's like oh. just a plate for it, you know. Just it gets to, to take it over. Yeah, so it's starting to table onto um, the skeleton of the uh, of the sponge. I I do tend to let it happen with yeah. corals that are more easily uh, available to me, or mm -hmm. I don't want to call them like cheap corals or something, but they they are more available type corals. Right. That, they're much more easy to get through trade. Mm -hmm. You're more likely than not to have other, well, at least in a very large tank, another version of it somewhere, something yes. happened to mm -hmm. it, um, as opposed to, like, home wrecker. I don't mm -hmm. have home wrecker, but if right. I did have home wrecker, anybody wants to send me home wrecker, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> we have some Disney we can give you. Yeah, uh, so yeah we, we can trade. Come out to Morgan Hill. We'll trade uh, corals. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's how I kind of look at that. Yeah, and it's just interesting to see, too, what corals look like under different in different aquariums. My pearlberry it w turned almost completely green at one point. Mm. Now it's finally starting to get that blue that you're that you always that, look for that in the light baby tips, blue colors you know? to it. Love it. But anyways, uh, you know, we're, what are we doing today? So anyways, what are we doing technically today? Yes, for all these what, apex geeks that have been doing listening to me and waiting for the technical stuff? So uh, one thing I just kind of want to show off were a couple of um, new features that are in the iOS app. I've kind of okay. been highlighting those from week to week. But um, you know, a uh, big thing that happened uh, just recently. I don't know if you uh, were aware. Um, I was really tired on Sunday. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Because the clock spring oh, right. forward, Terrence. Yes, right? I, I had to have it spring forward twice because I went to Denver. <laughs> oh, you got you got to experience it two times. Yes. Wonderful. Yes, but I did see some stuff online with some people having issues every year, twice a year. Uh, we have the time it change happens. issue and it inevitably creates a lot of problems, but I didn't see as many this year. Why do you think that is? Well, um, this year, uh, so uh, every year, right, we learn something new about daylight savings time and the time change and everything. But I that it happens? That it happens, number one, <laughs> but um, time changes are very complicated, right? There's a lot of time zones out yes. there. There are quarter time zones out there. There are half time zones out there, and it happens at different times. For people all across the world. For example, the UK has not gone through daylight savings time yet, as far as I understand, because I saw them complaining more this year than, than anyone else, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, I wanted to uh, just kind of show you, you know, where clock setup is in the apex, okay. how, like, how daylight savings times works, and then okay. when you have the infamous two clocks on your dashboard, yes. how to resolve that. And what are some of the reasons for that? Because, you know, I had two clocks when I was in Denver, so you'll probably talk about that. Let's right, right. You. So um, we'll get this on here. I'm only going to have one clock for us, unfortunately. Okay. I don't even have a Tech clock corner on. demo. Look I at that. Just, now really... we're on. We're on actually on iPhone demo today instead of an iPad. Sorry, demo. I forgot it happens. So Where are... now that gets to be the split screener for us. Where is the clock? Is At least I'm looking now. into the. As I'm looking to the screen over there, I'm looking into it on the live screen. So that's good. That's just uh, funny. You got an alarm. What What do you think is alarming? I don't know. Don't I don't know. It's just it, I get a lot of alarms from a lot of different. All right, there's my clock. I knew it was on my dashboard. <laughs> All right. So right now it's, you know, 545, right? And uh, sometimes you'll see two clocks on your Apex Fusion dashboard, right? Okay. If it's more than one hour difference, it's almost always due because you do not have the time zone set correctly, right? That's what happened to me when I was in Denver. That's yes. why I had two clocks. Because and so what you saw was the uh, yellow time, right, was the time that your Apex was in. Okay. Okay. Um, so, but then when you traveled to Denver, you went to mountain time. All okay. right? And when it's mountain time, you would have gotten a blue clock right next to it, knowing that you are um, an hour ahead, and so it was 6.45, and in okay. your apex, it was 7.45. 
But if you are in the same time zone as your apex, right, then you need to make sure that the time zone is set correctly on your apex. Okay, okay? and there's a setting for that. Yes, so on a new apex, right, so on the classic apexes, you have to do it through the display screen. When you set up your apex the first time, does it allow you to set that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. So, I thought so. Um, when you uh, set up a uh, apex, right, you have the ability to set the time zone. And there's this clock button right here, right above, above the Wi-Fi and the people. Okay, I see it. All right, and we can see that it's there, and you can see that I'm negative eight, which means that I'm in Pacific. But if I didn't know what time zone I was in, there's this little arrow button, right? So it says, hey, if you're in the same place as your apex right now, hit this arrow button, and it knows that I am okay. in uh, Okay, because I don't know what negative eight even means. It, mean, it means you're negative eight hours, eight hours off of the, uh, you know, the Greenwich Mountain time. Right? Greenwich? Greenwich Mountain Time, right? I say Greenwich, right? Uh, and that it's made, like that's a sandwich. That's essentially, well, it's getting close to dinner, Terrence. Uh, and uh, that, that that's essentially, uh, uh, the UK or London is always at zero, all right? Okay. So we're eight hours behind London right now, okay. essentially is what that's saying. So, yeah, so right now in London, it is like two in the morning almost. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, and so, uh, you know, so I can click that button. And, and if I said, well, no, I'm not there, right? I could say I'm in Louisville. Okay. Right? And then it's going to be... You're where? Louisville. That's how you say it. <laughs> Is that how you say it's not, it? It's not Louisville. It's no, Louisville. No, I say Louisville. Louis, Louisville. Louisville? That's okay. how you say it. It's like two syllables. Yeah, somewhere from there. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and uh, you know, you can change it if you know where that is. And then the big thing is, if you have daylight savings time, right, you want to make sure that's enabled okay. or enabled. If you're not and you're in Arizona... Um, and so it know. knows how daylight savings time works for your region? Yes. Okay. Right. And so if you're in Arizona... Um, yeah, uh, you're like the only person place in the United States. You don't. We don't do that right now, right? I don't know. I think they changed it. Did they change no, 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 it? No, no, no. That was something know. else they changed recently because they were strange on. And I can think of no reasons whatsoever you would ever want to have auto clock disabled. Okay, so you always want to have auto clock. So enabled. that uses the internet to determine yes. what time it is all the time. Mm -hmm. right, so if right. it got out of sync. It would just go get back in sync. Exactly right, and then you, the if you change anything here, the orange button would be um, illuminated. But I'm just going to go ahead and send the update. And okay. if you were to come back here and you were still to can see, I not have it in 24 hour time? Uh, you can have it in 24 hour time. Yes, you can. Uh, and uh, we're going to be bringing 12 hour time out soon. Oh, so that's not on there yet. Not on there yet. Okay. So that's a forthcoming feature. I, mean, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but 12 hour time is coming quick Shit. soon. Gee, uh, that, that's going to earn us at least another customer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you were the still... thought of 12-hour time. Oh, just, just slow your roll. All right? <laughs> and so, uh, you know, if you were to see two clocks there um, and you it was just driving you crazy, if you went to go reboot your Apex, right, um, it would automatically switch back to one clock or within about an hour or so, it's going to go back to one clock. So if you're stuck with the two things, right, uh, well, any, are you saying anytime I do a time change like that, I have to reboot the Apex? Uh, if you were to change the clock, you don't have to reboot your Apex, but to have it show an Apex Fusion right away, yes. I see. If you want to see it right away, like within a couple, like within 30 seconds. If I don't, how long will it take a Apex Fusion to figure it out? I'm not sure. On Apex Classics, it can take a little while longer, but okay. on uh, new Apexes, it doesn't take very long. Okay. Okay. Um, but, Wouldn't you uh, say it's like better not to reset your Apex if you don't have to? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. The the uh, my tank, bar, it's like kachu, 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 kachu. on the older Energy Bar Eights, yes. So yeah. the EB Eight Thirty Twos don't do that. Okay. So um, on the older Energy Bar Eights, when they uh, recon reconnected to an Apex, you get a to chunk. Hmm. Right, the EB eight thirty twos do. Um, that's a feature they, they they don't have. Okay. Right. Um, so uh, that's basically the clocks. I think uh, in the UK it was a little off this year. Sorry, um, you know our friends across the pond. Um, you know I know you're begrudgingly wondering where your tridents are and everything else. Soon, Maybe. very soon. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but uh, you know, um, uh, but other than that, it seems like it went very well this year. Okay. Course. Good. Okay. That's good because I know that has been in past years. Mm -hmm. A little of a problem, but yeah, yeah. it went really smoothly. Things this year. happen. Things happen. So what, what's um, next? Okay. Um, what else? We were going to talk about um, one feature that I have not seen anyone talk about. Um, you know, on Facebook or anything else like that is a new feature that the iOS app supports, and that's shortcuts. Right. It's a, in general, I don't think people are really using shortcuts at all in iOS. Right, not just with um, our stuff, but not, yeah, overall, I just think it's kind of general. like a real hidden feature. Right, and um, I'm not sure really why uh, that is that is the case, but a shortcut is super cool, right? It's kind so, of weird how to set it up for most people. I guess um, I'm going to go through just kind of like uh, I have a couple different shortcuts just from. How my did life. you get to that app that you're on right okay, now? Okay, so I just pulled down and then I typed in the word short, 
right? So and it, then bingo. So that's the icon for shortcuts. Shortcuts in it's iOS. An S, yes. Okay. And essentially, these are automations that you can do with your phone. So if you find that you're always doing several things, right, before um, you know your your um, uh, before an action, mm -hmm. right, um, you can automate those all into one event. So lots of different things in your phone. Right. So you know, if I want to know if my wife's on her way home from work, and I want to know how far she is, right? Normally, I, had, I used to have to open find my people, then I had to select her. Now I have a short. Keeping an eye on your wife, aren't you? Well, I want to know when she's getting home so I can have dinner ready if it's, I'm doing dinner that night, all that kind of stuff. So you can stop stuff. playing the game and act like you were taking the trash I may out. want to stop playing video yeah. games. We'll see. You know, but, um, but So you can set that up, and that happens through the native apps inside mm -hmm. iOS. Yep, and like it's really annoying when I'm trying to leave work, too. Like I can't make phone calls right away, um, so I always have to turn off my Wi-Fi because I'm on Wi-Fi oh, calling here. It mixes it and up. so this way, I don't get that whole disconnect. So when I leave work, I turn off Wi-Fi, and then I make my you know normal calls of, you know, hey, I'm going to do so this. So it's like old school macros, so to speak. Macro, exactly. That's a good way to say it. So, um, you know, and Apex Fusion supports this, right? So um, I can just go, go over here. So right? look, we do have somebody using it. So Jeff says, I'm using shortcuts. Works well for me since I run multiple Apex and systems. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna... So this is a good point, and, and one of the reasons why we're showing this to you, and probably should have said this up front, if you do have multiple Apex systems, instead of having to go to that long list, if you had, let's say, 10 or 20 or 1,000 like Paul has, and you want just two or three of the most important ones to be, have really quick, easy access, this is the way to do it. Exactly. So right now, um, I just scroll to the left, and then there are my shortcuts right there, and I want to open up my office tank. It's going to sign me right into that, that solution. Okay. If I wanted to feed my fish, right, I could do that as well. Um, I can just click on feed my fish and it that'll only happen if I am on the Wi-Fi network here because generally I only like to feed my fish when I'm here right right um, if I'm gonna do it through a macro otherwise I shouldn't have hit that right and so let me show you that one um, so you're gonna show us how you did the uh, feed my fish yes okay and so I only like to do that when I'm here at work okay okay um, so in that situation when I am on the network details is Neptune Right, so okay. when I'm on the Neptune Wi-Fi and I set feed A, you know, it's going to, and I say, uh, you know, feed my fish, it's going to automatically feed my fish right there. This right? is so cool. Then, but otherwise, if I'm not on the Wi-Fi network, it's like, uh, Paul, are you sure you want to do that? And it's just going to go to my, um, my office dashboard, okay? And then I can even use Siri in this situation. So I can, you know, to do the double click. Oops, that's not what we want to do. Yeah, charge, <laughs> charge it. What do you guys want to buy? Siri, feed my fish. <laughs> Oh, oh! She didn't get it, guys. Oh, we did the playthrough. Hey Siri, feed my fish. And there she's opening up Apex Fusion, and she's starting the feed a cycle. Very cool. Okay, and this is very similar to what I can do on um, Alexa as well, right? Okay. So uh, with Alexa, you know, I already have that set up as well, but I have to say I have one there for my fish. Right, and I can say ask a I can say Alexa ask Apex Fusion to feed my fish, right. and it will do the same thing. But this sort of immediately integrates it into my iOS. Right, and also because you can do this for uh, for each and every one of your Apexes that you run, right? Mm -hmm. You could based you, on location, based on right. Um, you can you can say different different key phrases, different names, key phrases. Key so you could say feed right. my fish in the office, uh -huh. and you could put that in, and, and it would do the one on the office. You exactly. say feed my fish at home. And do the one at home. Joe has a really cool one. So if he's at home, it feeds the tank at home. But he says, feed, he says, feed my fish for either one, right? So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But if he's at home, it's going to feed the, the fish tank at home. But when he's at the office, oh, it's going to so feed the cool. fish tank at the office. So cool. Just by looking at the network name. Yep. And so I wanted to set up one. So a person that I consistently need to go check out their Apex is my good friend here, Terrence. Okay. So I'm going to make a shortcut right now. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to click on create shortcut. Okay. And I'm going to click on Add Action, and I'm going to go right up here. I'm going to say Apex Fusion, right? And then um, it's right there. There's okay. Foo's Tank. I'm going to open it, and I'm going to say Next. And it's going to say, and I'm going to say uh, Foo's Tank. Foo's <laughs> Tank. Foo's Tank. All right. He is the Foo. Okay. And now I can do that same thing. And I can go to my shortcuts, and I can open up Foo's Tank and be done with it just like that. That was it? Yep, Foo's Tank. There it is. The only caveat is here, none of those shortcuts are going to show up unless you've done that in the app already. So if you've never hit Feed C in your app, oh, okay. that's right, an important that's it's an important not point. going to be there. 
right? Very important so you point. have to hit, you have to actually do the action in the app before it's available as a to shortcut. see as a shortcut. Yes, so sir. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's so. And let's let's go back here for a second, okay? Let's rewind, okay? Because Dupree Stewart said, "Where do I find the shortcuts?" Right. So, just right here in your spotlight, right? And so, the way you do that, guys, is you pull down and then you type shortcuts, okay? All right. Just type a couple letters, and then you're gonna see the S icon there, and there you go. And then to add a new one, you hit the plus, plus button or whatever else, and then there's all sorts of cool things. But remember, you, you got to do the action. In, in the app first. In the app. So yes. if you've never run the feed mode A in your Apex Fusion, then it won't show up in shortcuts. You have to do that feed, right? Mm -hmm. So I uh, got a question here on something else. Can we answer this one, Paul? Uh, yeah. Well, he yeah, yeah. asked it. Something, hey, I'm going to give you the tough ones, man. I'm not going to give you all the so, layups. So, so anyways, uh, <laughs> you, I, I think this is this is public knowledge, uh, you know, but um, if it's not, it's going to be out to be public knowledge. So we are working very diligently on, um, you know, always making things better for all of our customers. That includes our Android customers. We know Let's the do the question first. Mm -hmm. Something you guys should be aware of, Android just did an update recently, and now the P-Finder does not work. Now, P-Finder is to find the Apex, right, on the yes. network, right? Mm -hmm. How can I get to Apex Local without that? So the way that you would get it to Apex Local is you need to know the IP address, right? So you can know the IP address either A, in Apex Fusion, okay? Or B, you can use the Apex Browse utility on a Mac or a PC. Okay. Or you have a display screen and you can find the IP address of the Apex in that way. Or finally, if you know your way around a router, you could know the IP address based on the MAC address of the, of the Apex. But the other thing I think for people to know, too, that are looking for Apex Local, mm -hmm. right, it's, is they often forget... That it's not always apex.local well, either, right? I'll stop you uh, right there, Terrence, because uh, Android doesn't support even the name oh, apex.local. They don't. No, they use a whole different way that they do get things an in Android. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, just get an iPhone. Uh, I, most I know most, I'm going to upset some of you guys out there. I know a that a large percentage of our customer base. Um, but we're not forgetting you. You know, uses um, we are doing iPhones. work on it. Um, a vast majority of our customers are iPhone users, but we haven't forgotten you Android users. So we are working on even a new, uh, another Android update, right? It's something that's the engineering team is being very focused in right now. So it can be a unifying experience across iOS and Android. Yeah, I love you, Joe0813. iPhone, yuck. <sighs> Just, you know, guys, it just, it, it does I know, I know how you guys are. You're as passionate about your Android as I am about my iPhone, and that's yeah. okay. We're allowed to still have a conversation. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> the good news is we are working hard on that. It, I don't have a timeline or an ETA or okay. anything like that. It's very difficult to bring all of the great um, out of box experiences that our engineering team already okay. brought to the iOS app, bringing that into the Android app. But we are working hard and diligently to make that happen. It's going to happen. So we can go in full screen about it. Okay, so you have nothing else to demo I on that? I don't think so. Unless, okay. Was there anything else? No, to go no, not we particularly. We take some questions. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking about today. Uh, Jay says, "I'm buying everybody iPhones." Yay! <laughs> Drama D, yeah, we are working on stuff. Definitely working on it. It's not being left behind. Uh, let's see here. Oh, here we go. Drama D asks, "What's the module on the shelf behind you?" I think he's probably talking about this, maybe. Ooh, the Aqua Controller. This is the original. This is OG right here, okay? So this is the original Aqua Controller, not the Aqua Controller 1, not the Aqua Controller 2, it not the, the Aqua Controller Junior. It is the Aqua Controller 1. It's just the Aqua Controller, Paul. Yes, but okay? it is the first. Of, it is the first, but it was right? called the Aqua Controller. Yes, this is true. <laughs> and then there was the Aqua Controller 2, yes. right? Then there was the... I don't know the order off the top of my head. Aqua Controller 3. No, then there was Junior. the Aqua Controller... No, no, no. Then there was the Aqua Controller 3 Pro. Then there okay. was the Aqua Controller Junior. Okay. Then there was the Aqua Controller Three. Okay. Okay. So we came out with the Pro before we came out with the the Three. All right. Okay. And then there was the Apex Classic. Right. Apex Classic had many years of runtime. Um, the Apex Lite um, was a um, you know good brother well, of the Apex. Yeah, we got the Apex over there. Apex Classic, and then we had the Apex Junior. Right. And right. then um, now we have the, the Apex. Sure. Yes. Right. And then we have and then the uh, good friend of the Apex is the Apex L. Correct. That is the family. Correct. Uh, and there was a pH meter, a Neptune Systems pH meter at one time okay. as well, which, which, I, which there is one floating around the building. This I've makes me it. look like I want to go breaker one nine, breaker one nine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can I get a hold of my aquarium, please? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's what that module is for those of you that want to know. WBT. Uh, let's see here. 
WBT. That's pretty it's funny. True, way, it's true. way before Terrence. Yes, we. You know, we've been in business since what ninety six. Ninety six. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So been doing it for a while. Terrence, two thousand twelve. Uh, me, two thousand eleven. Yep. Oh, let's see here. Any other questions, Paul? That you saw rolling uh, through that were good? No, I don't. Oh, youth innovation. What? I, I, I got to hear about this. I just got roasted on BRS for euthanizing my blue digi with a plastic bag wrapped around the leftover base and injecting cow paste. <laughs> now, there is a Wait, way. Did you frag it first? That, that, I don't. I, if, do you, if you got a frag of it. So, so the reason that, th that this particular person, Brandon, probably euthanized his digi is because it was probably taking over. In a particular yeah. area, and I, that, I've never even heard of that. He basically encased it with some plastic uh, bag and then injected the calc paste so that the calc wouldn't fly out. That's, that's very pretty ingenious. That's very clever. Yeah, hmm. pretty inge it's ingenious. Before, huh? uh, they want more content, Paul, and they want it weekly, not bi-weekly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I don't get paid like Jimmy Fallon. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and we certainly don't have the support staff to do a show every week. It just yeah. can't uh, happen. Thank you, Jeff, for for you know the positive feedback. It looks like a whole um, lot of features on our dashboard that I'm not paying best for. Best place to buy a green slimer, Acropora. It's fairly popular. Uh, at least it is out here. I know it was in Utah, but I know corals all around the country are different for different people. Uh, one of the things that is kind of uh, it, it is a slimer because as soon as you 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 basically disrupt it at all it starts sliming right so if you mm -hmm. cut it uh, you take it out of water it's just goo starts coming in it has a horrible smell uh, and that's part of its you know defense mechanism so if you then put it into a bag and have it in there for too long it just gets nasty real yeah. quick uh, so you know but it is one of those things they grow really fast they do look beautiful when they get big uh, and you do have to trim them a lot Wait, like Sean's question this one yeah Looks like you have a whole lot of features on your dashboard that I have not paid for yet. How do I get those too? Oh, oh cool there's, boy. there's a way. There, there's a shot. Yeah, there is a way. Uh, yeah, every time you add another little module or another gadget, uh, yeah, you get some more goodies on your dashboard. And that's uh, one of the great things that I that I really like about our product. You plug it in, and immediately, right, uh, the, the, an icon kind of shows up that shows you have um, something you know, new. A, a, something new, right? Um, you know, if you have grayed out areas um, on the task, it's because you don't have a, the device that, that that task is for, right? So, um, you know, that's... Uh, that's how you get it. So if you want to if you want to see the dosing, you get a dose. Yeah. You want to see a trident, you get a trident. That's how it works. I like this too, David L. We're going to wrap this up in a minute, but put a Hollywood stunner next. It's an oxypora type yeah. coral. Uh, next to anything you want to nuke. That's yeah, if you, ha if you happen to have one of those corals, just uh, go out at night and look at them with the tank lights completely off, and you will see streamers huge streamers anything within you know <laughs> it just nukes everything mm -hmm. that and a pectina a, pecti oh a pectinia yeah the yeah. pectinias definitely yeah for sure uh more salinity probe we've gone over that i'm not gonna go over that again <laughs> right now belittle it mm -hmm. uh, belittle it belabor it uh i mean ba -ba 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 -ba. somebody wants these uh how do I use my IP address to access Apex Local? Well, you just so type it you, into the browser. You know, once you know the IP address, you just put that into your browser and bingo. Okay. And as we said, Stabila, we're going to get in it there. We're doing a lot of stuff on Android, right, Paul? Ne ne yes. And uh, But it sounds like he's having a tough time with both of us. Reach out, neptunesystems.com oh, forward okay. slash get help. I didn't read that correctly. Yes. So neptunesystems.com forward slash get help. And that'll take you immediately to our support form. Uh, you can fill that out. And if you want a call, just say, give me a call, and we'll take care of it. And we do have our forum.neptunesystems.com. If it's not an urgent thing or if you just want to kind of chat with other people or ask questions on how to do things, you can go to the forum. If you are a person who's mostly a Facebook-type person, obviously we do have a group on Facebook that's out there so you guys can share things and also help each other out. Uh, that's definitely uh, the way to go. So if you haven't seen that, go see that. Uh, subscribe to the channel on YouTube if you want to make sure you get notified of these uh, streams. Same thing on Facebook. Um, like our page. And next show is going to be March 24th. 
March 24th. I'm trying to secure right now uh, Thomas Burton from BRS, who just joined BRS. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great addition on that To team. basically come on, and we'll do an interview with Thomas Burton. He's done cool. some reviews already for BRS, and bring him on and uh, see if we can we can see what, what he's got going on. Okay, great. Okay. Well, thanks, Terrence. Yep. Thanks, everybody, for coming and joining us and living through the, the issues in the beginning. Hopefully it won't happen next time. Uh, and until next time, enjoy those fish, right, Paul? Thanks, guys. We appreciate you. Later. Bye.